What has changed is we are now talking to the major platforms, so uh, we call them wirehouses, so Morgan Stanley, UBS, uh, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo. Although the Bitcoin ETFs are live and have accumulated billions of dollars in inflows in under five months. They are in deep due diligence, like, okay, what is this? We have to have a point of view now. The vast majority of Wall Street has not bought yet, as the largest indexes and platforms have not listed them yet. They actually have an index against which they're going to be judged, and that's an ETF, right? Now Bitcoin is part of how they're going to be graded. And while the Bitcoin price has been consolidating for months, be prepared for what's next. And while no major platform has yet put any of us, any of the spot Bitcoin ETFs on its platform yet, uh, we think that's coming. We can tell from the kinds of questions they're asking. On Altcoin Daily, you subscribe for one video per day, keeping you informed about crypto. And Kathy Wood at Consensus explains the heat is on. So uh, the heat is on because this is a new asset class. Bitcoin is a new asset class. It's a monetary system to be sure, but it also represents a new asset class. And um, what that means in our world uh, is that as a fiduciary, someone looking after portfolios for people, a fiduciary has to consider a new asset class because of the low correlation uh, with other assets in terms of returns and risk. Uh, and so if you add Bitcoin to uh, an existing portfolio, if that is right, and this is, this is low correlation asset, what that means is over time, rep returns per unit of risk will go up. Uh, so if one platform has Bitcoin and offers that opportunity of diversification and higher risk adjusted returns, and another doesn't, then uh, they're going to have a problem if this one's right. So Kathy Wood is saying, that the game theory for these institutions for buying Bitcoin is on, and also the real reason the Ethereum ETFs have gotten approved. But but there didn't seem to be such friction in the Ethereum ETF being approved as there was with the Bitcoin ETF. Oh. What, what is your read on that? She was one of the filers. She was there. Oh, the read was it was not going to be approved. It was absolutely not going to be approved. So what happened? If it were to have been approved the regular way, we would have been getting questions, meaning from the SEC, and all of the, no one was getting questions from the SEC uh, beforehand. So that was an indication, no go, just, you know, we'll have to try it again. Um, what happened in one week's time, and I truly believe this was one of the, the, the things that happened is, there was sentiment evolving around this Fit 21 Act in the House that, wait a minute, this thing is gaining momentum on both sides of the aisle. And wow, this could be a, a, an election year issue. This is an election year. So the um, administration, I think, basically said, oh, and the other thing that happened was former President Trump uh, has become much more cozy with uh, Bitcoin, crypto generally, and uh, that week said he would accept campaign uh, donations in crypto. So again, this idea, this is an election year issue. And then I cannot tell you, I was on the phone with our COO, and he was like, he screamed when he saw this come across, like, what? It was within, we, within three days of being denied. We were sure, we, we were sure it was gonna be denied. And I think it was this campaign election year. You've got the legislative branch. You've got former President Trump. You had, you know, rapid fire and boom, here we are. And as this crypto market evolves, and as I'm searching for quality altcoins making progress, let's remember the DTCC, meaning the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, recognized as the world's premier settlement system, has completed a pilot project on Chainlink. Now you touched on this, but DTCC released a report this month 
highlighting some of the benefits which you mentioned, mm -hmm. but some include real-time, more automated data dissemination and built-in access to historical data. What else stood out to you in the report and how is this different than how the current financial system works? Meaning major United States banks are using Chainlink TradFi meets crypto. So in the current financial system, all of that data needs to be emailed across uh, many different groups, and the data only becomes available after days or weeks or months. Here, the data can be in an automated way generated by calculating it pretty much on the spot, and it's, so it can be made available every minute rather than every week or every month, and that's pretty significant when you think about this as valuation data that tells you the value of what you're buying or selling. And then the second thing that's pretty significant is the ability to move um, all of this data and all of these assets across different chains. So there was a dimension here where the data can also go across different chains through CCIP, the cross-chain interoperability protocol that we work on at Chainlink. And the ability to move this data across chains is very important because all the banks, all the asset managers are basically in the process of launching their own chains and they're going to want to use tokens and consume data from their own chain environment. But all those different chain environments need to be reliably connected. So that's one of the big things that we also work on. Also breaking news, PayPal stablecoin goes live on Solana. As PayPal announced today here at Consensus that its stablecoin, PYUSD, is now available on the Solana blockchain. The development comes about 10 months after first debuting on Ethereum. According to PayPal, the Solana blockchain is known for processing massive amounts of transactions at high speeds with low costs, which provides, quote, significant benefits for the commerce use cases. And it's interesting, they didn't choose an ETH layer two, they chose Solana. And hugely bullish news for customers, Gemini users will be made whole. Announced today that it will return nearly $2.2 billion to customers of the crypto exchange's defunct crypto lending program. That's after their funds in the EARN program were paused, withdrawals were paused back in November of 2022. Now the EARN program paused withdrawals in November 2022 and customers had their funds locked up ever since. In an email to customers today, the company, which is owned by twins Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, said that about 97% of the digital assets owed to users by Genesis, Gemini's lending partner in all of this, as of the suspension date, are now available in their Gemini accounts. This comes after Gemini's previous announcement that it had reached a settlement with Genesis and other creditors in the Genesis bankruptcy, which will result in all earn users receiving 100% of their digital assets back in kind. Now that means if users lent one Bitcoin in the EARN program, they'll receive one Bitcoin back as well, as any and all increases in the value of assets since they lent them into the program. Also join us for Bitcoin Nashville, July 25th through 27th. Use code altcoin daily for 10% off your ticket. This is going to be such an epic conference. Come out, hang out, link down below. See you there.